Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Excited to be here. I just I want to thank the Roundtable, Population Health Roundtable, for just having this really important, engaging conversation here today. And it's really a pleasure to be among such a group of leaders who are doing such an incredible things in their communities. And I was trying to think about, I mean, all these stories have been so inspiring, and I've been really trying to think about how do I bring it together? My thoughts are going 100 different directions. What's the starting place for this conversation about leaders on the frontier of health and well-being? And I thought, let's start with the Super Bowl halftime. So how many here watched the Super Bowl halftime last week? For those who didn't, J-Lo and Shakira were on stage and had an incredible performance. And what was amazing was the day after uh, I was talking with two of my um, other women colleagues and my team about that performance. And w the one woman was talking about how it was incredibly empowering for her to see two Latinas on the stage and speaking Spanish and celebrating Latin culture. The, another woman who is a leader in the Me Too movement had, you know, there was a tension in that conversation. And I watched it as the mother of an eight-year-old boy who was watching it. <laughs> And so we had this conversation, right, as a team, and we had these different perspectives. And I, I bring that up to start our conversation because, for two reasons. One, because it was an example of how important conversations about race and um, differences and inclusion and diversity, how important those are to have internally in order to authentically do the work that we all do in the communities. And the other point is, if three of us could have, three women could have incredibly different perspectives about a 20 minute show on TV, think about the perspectives that we have in the communities where we're doing this work. I mean, it's so complex, so deep, and so important to engage those voices. So um, I say that because I think we're gonna, we've heard those themes all day. I think we're gonna have those, that conversation now. Um, I'm Colby Daly, I'm the Managing Director of the Build Healthy Places Network. And we're an organization, we're based in San Francisco, we're national. Um, we started about five years ago with funding from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Doug's our executive director in the front row. Um, wave, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> and our job is to, we're the national center at the intersection of community development and health. And I'm just gonna say a couple of words about what that means to, to our work. But our mission is to shift the way that organizations work across community development, finance, and health in order to advance equity, reduce poverty, and improve health in low-income communities across the country. And we do that through connecting and convening and um, thought leadership. And the organizations, when I talk about community development, we've heard the, the term CDFIs used a bunch today, community development financial institutions. Who's familiar with that term? It seems like most of the folks, a lot of folks in the room are. But these are the nonprofit banks that are investing billions of dollars into low-income communities and really addressing social determinants of health. Um, CDCs, that's another term, and it's not the group in Atlanta, it's the Community Development Corporations. These are the nonprofit, often nonprofit developers who are doing the bricks and mortar, building affordable, quality affordable housing, grocery stores and food deserts, community centers, charter schools, and they work together as a sector investing really close to, I don't know what the number is, we used to say 200 billion, but probably much more than that in low-income communities across the country. Earlier this morning, um, David Erickson talked about the healthcare sector, uh, three and a half trillion we spend each year on healthcare in this country. Estimates, conservative estimates, he mentioned about a trillion of that is, is spent treating chronic condition, preventable chronic conditions really caused by poverty. So the opportunity for us is to really change the way these organizations think about investing in health. And if we can really move those dollars toward prevention in social determinants, in neighborhoods, in design, in inclusive placemaking um, and inclusive places, that's really going to change the health outcomes of the, in the communities that um, across the country. So we're here to talk about the frontiers and leaders in the frontier. And what's interesting to me is sort of this everything old is new again adage where these sectors, community development and health, the ones that we work with, they've been investing in the same places, often with the same people for decades. 
but they haven't known each other. And what is exciting to me is that the conversation now, they do know each other and they're working together and the opportunity to change that trillion dollar investment into health, into sick care, into health and, and um, prevention is in front of us. So um, as we think about the diverse perspectives, we think back to the Super Bowl halftime conversation, what is it that can bring us together? I just want to mention um, our organization. I had an extra cup of coffee at lunch, so I'm a little jittery. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but um, about two years ago, we undertook a, a process of really understanding what the goals are that these sectors have that are aligned. And so we spent two years cult, cult, um, going through mission statements, value statements. We got perspectives from over eight, 1,800 comments it to um, on a set of principles that reflect the values across sectors for building healthy and prosperous communities. They came down to agreed through two-year process, 200 organizations, 1,800 comments, um, five principles. I'm just going to read them to you. I also put a number of them, of these hard copies on the, the desk on, on the way out. You can grab one. Um, you can also see them on our website, which is uh, build.health slash principles. Principle one, collaborate with the community. We've heard that over and over again in the inspiring examples this afternoon and this morning. Principle two, embed equity. Principle three, mobilize across sectors. Principle four, increase prosperity to improve health. And principle five, commit over the long term. These came from the organizations. Some of you were in, who are in this room helped inform and shape, inform and shape them. We heard this um, from, we hear this refrain over and over again. Um, so those aligned goals really help get these diverse perspectives. Kind of in, headed toward the North Star. So to get our panel discussion going, I want to, I could keep going, and there's so many examples in practice, but I'm going to turn it over to our colleagues on the panel here, and I'm happy to have um, just met most of you in person today, and happy to, happy to do that. So um, to my left is Nicole Payne. She's a program manager at the National Association of City Transportation Offices, supporting cities for cycling. Next to her is Nupur Chidari, and she is an urbanist and program officer with the New York State Health Foundation. Uh, Justin Garrett Moore is an urban designer and the executive director of the New York City Public Design Commission. And Jennifer Allen is the city strategies manager.